<laughs> My name is Helen, and I was a shop steward in the Lee Jean sit in. <laughs> Perfect. Well, me being a shop steward, and I had some meetings, I knew the, first of all, the cutting room away to Northern Ireland. So I knew that that didn't look good. So there was a, I think it, we had supposed to have been getting a, a rise, and each time we went in, we weren't getting it, you know, the rise that was put back. So I figured myself, and then when the cutting room went, and I figured there's something going on here that uh, we're not going to. So that started about, I think that started about September, what I can remember. And this went on, different meetings, different meetings, right up to after Christmas. And so uh, when we had the next meeting, they kept saying we'll have the next meeting. We put up a lot of proposals, so we're making it, you know, it was the value of the pound and different things. So I put up a proposal then. Uh, Greenock was quite bad for jobs then. And this was a whole lot of young girls just starting out in life. So I thought, good that you keep the factory in Greenock. And if things get better, we'll still be there. But if they take the factory away, we've got nothing. So I put up a proposal that uh, if uh, we took a three day week, uh, we could maybe last. That was put, no, they didn't accept that, uh, different things. So our last meeting, uh, I had a meeting with the rest of the committee and I said, I'm going into this meeting right now. I said, and when I come back out, so we, we decided we were going to barricade ourselves in, but they didn't know that. We decided we'd do that. We had this meeting, and when I come out, and whatever I tell you, say to you, the meeting didn't go well, get right into, you know, we, we, we had it planned what we would do. So I went in and I knocked everything, everything that was said, every proposal I made to help the factory and to keep it in green up, they knocked back. So when I come back out, they were all in the canteen waiting, you know, for the meeting. And I said, well, I've knocked it back. So the next thing, there was a door in the canteen, there was a door that you went out to the factory and there was a door you went into the office. And for the office, they couldn't get into the canteen, if we, so we had it all, we barricaded it. And uh, so then I, I let them know, I went in and I let them know that we weren't going, we weren't going home. So for some reason, it went out in the, uh, the Scottish news that uh, we were, we barricaded ourselves in. So we're all hungry and they closed, well, the kitchen was closed because it did close after dinner time. And they, so we decided we'll go together and what money we had and we decided we'd get fish suppers. So there were two of the young boys and one of the girls. Uh, and if they went out the door, they couldn't get in because by this time we didn't have keys. So they went up over the roof and get out and get fish suppers. But by that time it had went out in the news and there were people up at the windies handing in blankets and food and all sorts. And it, so that was us, so we kind of wandered about, uh, well, I wandered about all night, and the, the manager of the factory, uh, and they were wandering, just to stretch your legs, were up and down the factory floor. And he said, Helen, I would appreciate it if you could keep the, the boys and girls in the factory, in, in the canteen instead of wandering the factory. I says, well, Fair enough, I'll appreciate it if you open that kitchen. You open the kitchen and we'll make ourselves tea. I'll keep them, I'll get them to stay out of the factory. So he did, he opened the kitchen, which, which was a big mistake because when, once we had the kitchen opened, it meant that that was us. We had somewhere to get, make tea and do different things, you know. So then it went for them, and then the next day, there were all sorts of press and everything up, and they wanted to speak to me, and I was saying, 
tell him I'm no one, I'm no one to speak to anybody because I thought a couple of days and they'll cave in. <laughs> Seven months. <laughs> you know what? So I thought a couple of days, so I never spoke to any of them. And then as time went on, you knew you, you needed a bit of publicity, so I had to then meet the press and tell them what was happening. So that was the beginning of it. Well, when the, when we started at first, right, I suppose there were enough to keep them going because there was a television people up, there was newspapers up. But as time went on, and there would be a lull. There would be a lull even in the, on the negotiations. You know, nobody was talking to you anymore. So we had to keep the morale up. So we started getting uh, people down. There were concerts and different things like that to keep the girls going. And then some, uh, what I, well, I spoke to the committee and I said, I think we should allow, uh, we should allow some, you know, so many of them off so many nights to try and keep them, keep them going. So this is what we did. We then organised it that some of them would have a couple of nights off and uh, to make it, you know, to keep their morale up because it was, seven months was a long, long time and they, and they were only young girls. They were missing going out to the dancing and all the rest of it. So we had some dancing up there at the factory. <laughs> well, as you know, we settled in, uh, the girls uh, kept themselves occupied. Uh, there were a lot of knitting, you know, I mean, they ended up professional knitters and stuff like that. And there were also a couple of girls, that, uh, a wee boy, there were a wee boy, and uh, two of them had children. And uh, so, because they had no wages, they, had, they couldn't get a babysitter. So we had the babies in as well. So what we did, when we set ourselves up, we set ourselves up and we made it a, a list that everybody had their, their duties to do. You know, when they come in the morning, somebody had to clean the toilet, somebody had to clean the kitchen, somebody had to watch the two children and change them. It was a relief, you know, when it was all over, because you've got to remember it, we were out of our house most of the time, you know, for seven months. and they, I had the, I, my son and my daughter in this in as well, and uh, myself. So there were three us, you know, disrupting mm -hmm. my family home. <laughs> so, but so when it was over, we were just delighted that it was all over, and we were going to get our jobs back, you know. And it started off. I got a promise when they said they were, somebody was taking it over. I would. I got a job by that time. There were 140 of us. And I got a promise that 140 would get their jobs, but it would need to, they would need to stagger it because if you're making a pair of jeans, you've got to start off with the, making the pockets and then moving down. So everybody didn't get started on the first day, but as the time went on, you know, if it came to your job, you get started. Well, I mean, some people might think it wasn't worth it, but I think it was worth it. I think they were showed up for uh, the way they were treating working class folk. I mean, what they were doing was um, taking the good of the grants they were getting, and then when their grants was finished and their jeans was going to cost more for them to make, they thought then they would just dump us. So I still think it was worth it. I don't think there's any negative things that would come from the, the sitting. I'm never sorry that it happened, and I don't think the girls, the girls used to say to me, I mean, you've got to remember, they were 17, 18, and they says, we got an experience that we would have never have had. It says, we didn't know what that was, trade unions was all about. To, we, see, when this factory opened at first, they didn't believe in unions. I mean, this is, you know, a way back long before the, the sit-in started, they didn't believe in unions. and. The, the, and they were quite nasty to the young girls, because when you work in a, uh, well, a sewing machine factory, you work on bonus, you get a basic wage, so you've got to do a certain percentage to make your basic wage, and after that it's bonus. 
You know, there were some girls that they didn't get the, they didn't get proper training. They never had training charts, and they never get put proper training. So, if they didn't make even a basic wage, I would find out and if oh somebody says such and such a one get fired, and this is I wasn't the shop steward then, but of course, when I heard these things, I thought that's no fair. That's definitely no fair, and so I kind of you know, put my tuppence with her and say, that's no fair. So I ended up getting sacked as well. That, that had nothing to do with sitting, that was before it, but that was how the trade union in the factory started, because I got sacked and when I went out, they all come out with me. And they, then we went to arbitration in Glasgow and they were told they had to accept the union. So that was the start of it. So that was at the very beginning. That was away when the factory opened at first. So uh, I think that was in the seventies, aye, seventies, and uh, that was. So that's the kind of things that happened. So I'm never, I'm never sorry that it happened because it made us stronger. Well, the, the memories that we were just like one big family. We were all, we all looked after each other. And we had a good bunch, you know, we still are friendly to this day. And that's many years now, it was 82. So it was 82 it started, and we're still friendly in Greenock. And uh, so that was my memory of it, you know, that everybody really stuck together. That in particular, I think everybody should stick together. No matter, no matter what happens, you're better when you're all feeling the same way, you're stronger then. It's when you don't stick together, they divide you. And that was one thing about us, we did stick together. <laughs>